Are you working hard to keep yourself limited and playing small? Is that working for you? If not, would you like to be changing that now? What if the key to activating your wealth was in the willingness to embody the abundance of possibilities you are? Would you choose it? Join in the conversation now on Living Well with your host, Keisha Clark, and receive tools and facilitation to clear the points of view that keep you stuck in limitation to begin choosing your abundance and living well right now. <laughs> Good morning from Lily and I. <laughs> Welcome to Living Well on a to zenfm Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are in the world. And thank you for joining us for this little bit of time to have some fun and fabulous conversation. Uh, I am Keisha Clark, your host, and if you so desire, for the next roughly hour or so, you are Living Well Empowerment Agent. And I have the fantastic privilege of having another guest today to also uh, play with some empowerment with entities today. Oh, my goodness. How did we get so lucky to have Erica Glessing Ooh. back and we will I will do a big intro in just a moment with Erica uh, in the meantime if you haven't joined us in the chat room already and you are on a to zen.fm please look for the word chat room in the red bar near the top of your screen and click on that give yourself a name and come on in and if at some point you have questions you can find the call-in numbers at the top of the screen where you're listening in most cases and if you don't have that I'll I'll say it now. You can call us in the U.S. at 815-880-8255. In Canada, you can dial us at 613-800-8736. And in the U.K., you can dial us at 033-0001-0625. You can also Skype us here at a to zen.fm. You do not have to wait for a reply to your contact request. Just send one and click that little call icon and come join us. Um, bring your questions bring your uh, experiences, bring your awarenesses, and let's have some fun today. We are talking about one of my favorite subjects, what if entities wish to contribute to you? So <clears throat> I got to have the pleasure of Erica Glessing uh, being on my show, being a guest on my show a little while back, and that was in May, I believe. So we've had just a little bit of time now to come up with some more fun stuff. And Erica Glessing is... Um, just a joy and a delight <laughs> to play with if you've not met her. <laughs> she is a publisher. She is a number one best-selling author. She is a psychic medium, an editor, a dreamer, a bright writer, an animal communicator. She's also a mom. She's also a happiness coach. How cool is that? And she is an all-around genuinely loving spirit. And her company, Happy Publishing, is dedicated to publishing the works of light bringers around the planet. And some of the best-selling books that Happy Publishing has released in 2015 so far include The Energy of Happiness, The Energy of Receiving, The Energy of Expansion, and most recently the number one bestseller, The Energy of Healing, which I have a copy of as well. How does it get even Whoa. better? Welcome, oh. Erica, my beautiful friend. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love to introduce. That was such a kick. <laughs> Introduce like once a week there for no reason. That's a great idea. You know, just record people doing an intro of you and like, because I've been told by a few people they like the way I introduce them, so I'll be happy to send you know. a clip of that. I know. I mean, if you know, if you were feeling like an inch tall, it makes you feel like a foot tall. Yeah, exactly. How does it get even better? It's like, oh, I do some pretty cool things, don't I? Wow. I know. Oh, I forgot. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh yeah. Oh, you're right. I did that. Oh my gosh. And one of our fellow show host Rioa has a, a phrase that she uses. She says, I love that about me. And I'm learning to apply that to me as well. And I'm like, oh, that's fun to say. I love that about me. And I love lots of things about other people too. So how does it get even more fun? <laughs> and last time we had you uh, on the show, we were really talking about <clears throat> the energy of I'm having it. And that's an up-and-coming book that is in the works with Happy Publishing. And um, we, of course, had a fabulous time, and we laughed pretty much all the way through the show. If anyone wants to go to the archives and have some laughter yoga or just a dose oh of God. happiness, um, that would yes. be one of the shows to pick. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. 
And it's this so time, pretty. we are talking about entities, and I think it's really cool that um, you actually work on a, a pretty much all the time, every day, almost all day, in some way, shape, or fashion, with um, entities, and that would be people that n not really many people can see with their eyeballs, correct? Oops, I don't know. I, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe can see them. <laughs> No, I mean, I some people so. might be able to see them, but most people don't see them. Is that accurate to say? <laughs> oh, exactly. I mean, for me, I for me, the entities come as messages. So I get messages from, oh my gosh, I get messages from some of the coolest singers. I'm always attracting um, R&B singers, and I think because I just love music so much, and I love their music so much. So when there's a connection like that. Um, and now sometimes they show up just because they can feel that I can chat with them and then they're so excited mm -hmm. that I can hear them that they're like, <laughs> they're having little parties in my head. <laughs> and, and, you know, the people that I speak with who have entity communication, basically anybody who doesn't have their body anymore, you know, mm -hmm. um, once I have an entity communication and if I start chatting with someone about their own experiences, so many people have experiences connecting to spirit. You know, maybe they'll see a license plate or maybe a butterfly. They mm -hmm. show up right when they're talking about their grandmother. Or, you know, maybe they'll be in the kitchen. One of my clients that she was in the kitchen. And I said, you know what? That's where your mom likes to come to you when you're cooking and she likes to give you recipe ideas. And so she would get like is from her home country when she's in the kitchen. She's from, you know, eastern countries. And she would get these really, and, uh, and it was so clear to me that was her mother's way because in the kitchen was a very beautiful place where her mom used to like to the house. Wow. <laughs> and so the messages from her mom would come um, in to her when she had her hands in food. I could feel it. Wow. And That's told that it was made her feel so good because it's like that thing like there's all this fear around it and there's all this trepidation around yeah. it and there's all this sadness when people lose someone but when you start feeling the messages and trusting the messages from the entities there's actually an opportunity for some exceptional joy and that's kind of where I like to go. Nice. And that's, it's like what if and, and I've, uh, for, for many of the listeners, uh, I've talked about, we've had conversations about entities before. Um, several of those conversations have been with the delightful Cara Wright. And, um, <clears throat> um, and we, we talk about an entity simply is an energy that is defined. So, um, <clears throat> and we also talk about entities as like your business is an entity and a song could be an entity and your books are entities. You have many entities out in the world that are creating amazing things with many, many people and co-creating with many, many people. And, and what if when it comes to our relationship with people when they're in bodies, <clears throat> what if we could – really not have to end the relationship? What if we could actually be continuing the relationship? Um, yes, it, it changes in the way that it looks and in the way that we would be communicating or sharing time or spending time with those those beings. Um, but yeah, because when you were saying that, like when she had her hands in the food, there's like, oh, there was this, this energy of this just amazing um, – connection and and not from a space of trying to keep a person with us or to possess a person really more of like doing the things that people loved to do when they were here with us or when we were here with them it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's yeah. sort of like that that just that celebration you know when we're doing that so when this mm -hmm. woman is preparing yeah. food what if that's part of the celebration of the gift of her mother and the gifts her mother gave her? And then the receiving right. of oh. her mother's energy is also what a contribution that could be. And that's part of what exactly. I loved about today's topic. Yeah. yeah. And and the way that that gift mm -hmm. shows up and the way that that contribution can be received is so different than what we think it might be. Because I know a lot of people right. – they think of getting something from entities as like a really important piece of information, you know, and important pieces of information are great <laughs> and can be very helpful. And what if it's simply like being present and acknowledging, wow, 
We have right. amazing well, beings here. <laughs> yeah. See, for me, I get these crazy things. So, like, if I, I have to be careful, like, if I go to the movies, because, like, mm-hmm. the movie stars from the movies might chat with me. So, mm-hmm. I was getting ready to go see Fast and Furious 7 with my children, uh-huh. and one of the stars was Paul Walker, who died, and his spirit is so flippin' chatty. <laughs> so his spirit is really fun and really chatty. And yeah. I have to say, like, I I have to, I, I'm honestly, like, wasn't in awe of him because I, like, I mean, I he's cool. But mm-hmm. it's like, I was never, like, you know, I mean, he's not my type. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Anyone who knows me well, they get that. He's not my type. So the funniest <laughs> thing was he started chatting with me and, and he really felt that my spirit was special. Mm-hmm. And so I'm getting this energy from him. And basically I could ask any question and I could go prove it on the Internet. So yeah. the truth of the thing he would share with me was validat- validatable. It's not really a yeah. word. But I could validate <laughs> it pretty easily because he's so famous. So I could, like, mm-hmm. go and validate the messages. So the mm-hmm. spirit of his energy was a kick in the pants. And then... He was like, I want you to walk into the room like you're my wife. I'm like, what? <laughs> because basically, if you look at it like if you're not holding yourself in a certain way, then you're not being treated in a certain way. And so he was seeing something in me that I couldn't see. And he was sharing that with me in this beautiful downloadable thing yeah. of, you know, and, and then it was just like, then what planes would you catch, and where would you go, and how would you walk into a room, and how would you wow. treat yourself, and wow. and it's like, you know, what if you were my wife, and are you behaving in a certain way, like, to command that kind of calibration of beingness? I love and it, that. Yes, and and the funniest thing is like, he's so funny because he's here now, so he's like cracking up. He's like, ah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I really fucked with your head well. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> He's like, I really messed with you well. And I was like, yeah. And it was so much fun. And, and the funniest thing is, like, I'm not really, like, I like rap music, but I'm not really into, like, popular culture that well. Mm-hmm. And so I started tapping into all of the places, and he had all these messages for people that he loved in his little group of family. Mm-hmm. And the one Keisha that he taught me that I feel like your listeners are just going to really love is that you build your family with the people who you build your family with and it has Mm. been fun. And so just let go of that. Like just let go of all the stuff, all the places where you said your family had to be your blood. Yeah. And I was doing a reading for someone and her, a guy came through and he was a young man in his early 40s and I said, she had a lot of relatives who'd passed that she wanted to talk to. Mm-hmm. And this guy was, um, like, in his late 30s, early 40s when he passed. Mm-hmm. And he had serious messages for my client. Wow. And they were so beautiful. And he was pretty high up. And he came across as, like, an architect. It was the word that showed up for me. Uh-huh. And he was a creator. He was, like, a, um, a, he created, like, square products and he was actually really high up in some big company. I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. And he had all these messages for her. And it was really from such a place of a vibration of family with her. Yeah. And he really, it turned out, he was the brother of one of her best friends. Wow. And so that, yes, and I just got chills, which is the sanctioning of that as complete truth. And mm. so they, he felt with her that they were family, you yeah. see? Yeah. And I mean, how many times have we been family? Uh, you know, I mean... That's you, true, too, right? We've we've done lots of... We've played so many roles over the eons. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, it's funny because we do have expressions for, like, when we're in bodies, we say birds of a feather flock together, and we say something about people of their kind, you know, and, and all of that. But then if you look at the energy of that, there is also that, that vibrational sort of compatibility. And, and I don't think that we have to lose that, at least in my experience. No, we don't, no, we right? don't have to lose that, no matter yeah. if we have a body or not. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. It makes me um, – it brings to mind the uh, – I see a lot of postings on Facebook from um, 
I may not be saying this correctly, but uh, The Afterlife of Billy Fingers, I believe it's called. Um, oh, yeah. And cool. there are lots of messages that come through. Uh huh. And that's a beautiful story. I saw a trailer for, I think, an upcoming movie. I'm not sure if it's been released yet um, about this, the story of that. And um, it was just this beautiful, you know, you wouldn't have known that this person would be someone who would, like, bring beautiful messages when they were in a body. They They didn't really live a life that would be associated with, you know, <laughs> harmony and tranquility and inspirational messages. And then after he left his body, um, he began to bring messages back to his loved ones. Um, and he yeah. had a very different yeah. perspective. So, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, so that's another key message I was shown to share with your listeners. So mm-hmm. it's really interesting that you brought that up, is that sometimes we hold people to a certain personality characteristics and once Mm -hmm. they've crossed their spirits actually quite free to do all kinds of stuff and so Mm -hmm. that's something that I had to change with my mom because she Mm -hmm. had some very strong controlling energy and I had to I had to let go of some of that and not see her the way she was to me always on the planet earth when she was in a uh, not in her body anymore, and she would have these fun contributions for me, and she'd be present, helping all joyful and bounce off the walls each. And it was, like, so different than I had to let go of my knowledge of her in order to let her spirit yeah. nourish me now because I've changed so much since she was alive. Yeah. And so she's actually, but we can actually, our own perceptions and beliefs can shape so with the afterlife of Billy Fingers, that author let her brother give her messages of a high vibrational calibration that were not available to her from him when she was younger. Mm. So she had to like totally change her perception of his of his spirit. She had to mm-hmm. let in full messages. Yeah. And he's willing to help with the movie. Like he's willing I don't know if she's I mean, I feel him all like, yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not that anymore. Like, yeah, I chose that, but I'm not using that anymore. And, and like, it's so fun right now. Like, I can get messages from him. It's like, he's just like, oh, this yeah. is fun. Yeah. I'm letting everybody know that, like, spirit yeah. exists. Make yeah. spirit, like, happy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's, I love that point of just keeping, like, in our awareness that, a person may not be exactly the way they were in life when they were in a body. You know, we all change our points of view from day to day, from moment to moment. And there is something that we talk about a lot in some of the classes um, <clears throat> around and in the conversations around access consciousness with the talk to the entities work, which um, that particular body of work is within the access consciousness realm uh, arena, you could say. <laughs> and, um, and that was uh, founded, co-founded with Gary Douglas and, and Shannon O'Hara. And they, um, one of the things I loved when I first started listening to Shannon have conversation was, you know, a lot of people sort of have this point of view that um, when people die, they're automatically like way, 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 you know, on high. And, and like they become these old, wise sage spirits and not everybody does that it's really it's like the, the more I got to know and play with entities the more I was like oh yes of course it's just like people I mean really it's just the difference is they either have bodies or they don't have bodies and it's like their points of view may not change at all if you had some really unhappy grumpy uh, nasty mouthed you know smoking drinking foul person when they were in a body and they just really like that energy they might be like that even with nobody. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Know. I mean, that's, I don't, when I, for me, I tend to stalk entities. Which is probably a good place to go. <laughs> More on how Erica stalks Michael Jackson. I'm just there kidding. we go. <laughs> and now that we've left you on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Um, it is a good place to break, though. We will do that. Um, I do feel people.
people's universe is kind of like, huh? And uh, I will add one piece of information. So people can stay exactly the way they are. Beings can choose to be exactly the way they are with or without a body. And they can also choose to change their points of view. And it doesn't have to take moving mountains and, you know, congressional acts to, to do that. So, yes, let's talk some more about this. Wow, we're having so much fun. Um, you are listening to Living Well on A to Zen dot FM. And I am Keisha Clark. And I am visiting today with the delightful Erica Glessing. And we are talking about receiving the contribution of entities. And we will be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> Have you begun to ask yourself what you truly desire to create in your life? What if you being willing to embody abundant living was the key to your wealth and to creating greater in your life? And what if that could also be the invitation for more people to be willing to embody abundant living? Would that be a contribution to you and your body and to other people and their bodies? And might that also create more in the future? Join Keisha Clark Empowerment Agent and the host of Living Well Radio Show to discover, uncover, and crack open the wealth of possibilities you are every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? How much of your life are you truly living? Are you creating your life in celebration of your strengths and capabilities? What would your life be like if you were choosing the abundance of possibilities of you now? Connect with Keisha Clark, your Living Well Empowerment Agent now for a different perspective on creating the life you truly desire to be living. Call in with your questions in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada at 613-800-8255. 8736 in the UK at 033-0001-0625 by Skype at a2zen.fm or by emailing Keisha at livingwellnow at gmail.com Now back to our show. Welcome back to Living Well here on A to Zen FM. I am Keisha Clark, your host, and today I am joined by the lovely Erica Glessing, a woman of many, many capacities. <laughs> and we were talking about, um, well, t- today's topic is uh, what if entities actually really do wish to contribute to you. Um, and I know that entities have made an enormous difference in my life. Um, Of course, they were doing that before I was even really willing to acknowledge that they were doing that. (laughs) Right, Um, exactly, right. (laughs) Do you have, do you, like, did you have a conscious awareness of beings being present with you even as a child, or or how far? Yeah, I didn't have it as a child. Well, I've always been psychic, so I've always known stuff. Um, I've always known things I couldn't know, so Mm -hmm. that's interesting um mm-hmm. but i wasn't one of those people that had like you know at age four some spirit came and hung out of my bed with me like i never had any doubt but i didn't know anyone mm-hmm. who died when i was young either so mm-hmm. you know that mm-hmm. had something to do with it um so uh for me it was 1998 when i was riding my horse up in a, a uh up in a big area behind a ranch and i got a message for the ranch owner and it just showed up in my head, and I was like, what is on earth is going on? And oh. I was, there was no way I was capable in 1998 of telling this 85-year-old person that I had a message for him from spirit. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't I, – I kind of knew what it was. Like, I kind of got it. Like, I, when I look back, though, 
like, I remember someone's just reminding me when I was in my 20s, someone died when I was wa- uh, watching them play basketball at a college basketball game. Wow. And he was uh-huh. on the basketball team, and he was a um, he was on the college newspaper with me. So I knew him. We were both writers. And he was also my state major in psychology, and he loved people. Really nice person, really gentle spirit. And I watched him have, like, a heart attack and die playing basketball. And so he laid down on the court and I'm at the game and I'm watching it and so this was way before 1998 this is like 1980 something and so I was like I was like okay so I but I knew right away it was completely serious like I knew right away it wasn't like he twisted his ankle Mm -hmm. like when the paramedics came like I knew I could feel it I could feel the intensity of the vibration of it and I was like I said I was just talking to one of my friends who knew the cousin of this guy because I was like, well, I didn't really know anyone who died when I was young, but then I remembered Leon. And so as soon as I remembered that, I remembered all the feelings I had around it and all the knowings I had around it. Mm -hmm. And I think now in retrospect, that was information and vibrations from his spirit that I couldn't, like you said, like I didn't read or couldn't take. But Mm -hmm. in 1998, it was like super uber clear, like, you know, and he gave me the message, a grandchild is a grandchild is a grandchild. And I just couldn't say anything for like two months. And then finally, something kicked me in the butt. I don't remember what it was, but something was just like, I was up at the ranch and I was by myself. And the mm-hmm. owner of the ranch was there. And we were just alone because he was feeding the horses. It was like 6.30 in the morning. There was like no one else at the whole ranch. And there's hundreds of people going to this ranch. And there's nobody there except me and him. And he's feeding my horse and chatting with me, and he's in a really good mood. And he was, like, really moody, so he's, like, in a great mood. Mm -hmm. And I look at him, and I go, and he was kind of, like, about five foot two crinkled over kind of older person. Mm -hmm. And I go, "Uh, do you believe in, like, you know, messages from spirit? And he looked at me, he goes, oh, I love that stuff. (laughs) I listen to a radio show every morning. Oh my God, I love that stuff. And I'm just shocked. Wow. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh my God, I just can't get enough of that. I love that. Which is like, I'm just like, oh, I go, well, when I was up and I told him where I was, I got a message for you and it was, and I told him what it was. Well, it turned out the place I got the message was where my uh, this guy was born. It was at the homestead 85 years before. It was at the homestead of the family uh, where he was born is where I got the message, and it was from his dad, and his dad had five children, and at that time, which is again, you know, maybe, what, 50 years ago, uh, mostly you were different with your boys and your girls, yeah. and he didn't believe in that. He believed every child should get an equal part, and they were very wealthy. They owned hundreds and hundreds of acres in, uh, near San Francisco, so hundreds of, like, maybe a 1,000 acres near San Francisco of this beautiful land, just amazing land. And so his message was, a grandchild is a grandchild is a grandchild. And it was right at the time when this man, who's now 85, was doing the will for his grandchildren. And he had favorites, right? Oh, my goodness. And the message was so germane. Like, it couldn't have been a more (laughs) perfect message. Like, there's no way, first of all, there's no way I could have got that message out of the earth up in the hills by myself. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a grandchild is a grandchild is a grandchild. Like, what the heck, right? It has no me <laughs> at all. And then why would I just run up to the owner of a ranch and say that message? Like, right. there's nothing. Like, it, it, there, it's just completely easy to validate. And as soon as I mentioned it, it was like, and then he was like trying to get messages from everybody he knew. <laughs> Stuff there, so that was kind of the genesis for me of there being something that could be validated. Um, and then uh, in 2012, Michael Jackson started giving me gospel messages, and I would like I would say to him, if this was really you, put it on the radio, and his song was on the radio, like kabam, like oh, how he funny. Me, he could mess with the people like right and left at that time. So he wanted me to write a book for him. And the funny thing is, you know, I'm an author and a publisher, and I'm, I'm a ghostwriter. And he goes, well, you said you were a ghostwriter. <laughs> No, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't, you know, Keisha, I couldn't, I was like, what would happen with the uh, 
the judgment, like what would happen with people crazy. And so I would ask him specific questions and he would download crap loads of information that I could then go and research. Wow. Because one question he asked, one question I said, what about the doctor? And he was so funny. He had the best sense of humor. Michael did. He goes, well, he was paid very well. Like, <laughs> you know, I took care of him. I paid him. And I went online and he made $150,000 a month or something to take care of Michael. So, you know, that was his, that. it wasn't about this or that. The thing is, like, the messages they give might not be the exact answers to the questions you ask. Yeah. But, I mean, that yeah. was a pretty good answer. And it was completely validable. I mean, I could completely validate the information. And, I mean, it, some of the things, the other thing, um, he gave me a message for one of my clients and it was, um, she was like, how did you get that stage presence? Like, how did you get that pizzazz that you get when you're like, and how did you, oh, how did, what did she ask? How did you get around? I can't remember, like, what the question was exactly, but I have it on a recording. Mm-hmm. His answer was put himself with really good people around him, and he trusted the people that he showed him. He showed me uh, Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. And again, the good thing is I'm, I don't read the news, so I like, have no clue. And then I went online, and Jones had produced his Thriller album. And that wasn't information I personally knew, like it is information that's very available. Right, right. But not information. So as soon as he showed me Quincy, it was like, kabam, I'm like getting these clear messages that are completely validatable. And there's just no way I could deny he said that I was getting messages from spirit. So, mm-hmm. um know what evolved for me was saying okay this is really cool that these exceptionally cool people like to hang out with me uh, on spirit so then the next step that access tools taught me this is how can they nourish my life how can they bring money how can they bring me more of whatever i'm seeking how can they help my clients how can uh, how can there be a nourishment and like a givingness of making life better. And it's not always they want me to give a message to someone, although it's often that. It's often they want me to give a mm-hmm. message to someone. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's about, like, how can they make, you know, they're actually interested in, in being benevolent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we have a, a great question in the chat room, too. Um, Carol's asking, one thing that's always confused me, if we return to energy and we lose definition when we pass, then how can a quote-unquote person just come in like that? And I have some awarenesses around that. Um, I'll, I'll hand you the floor first, though, Erica. Do you have some particular um, awarenesses or experiences around that? Well, part of what makes me want to say is, first of all, who cares? Because how is it a specific question? And I don't really care. Like, if I'm getting messages from Michael Jackson and he's helping me in my life, right. like, how is he doing that? I don't know. Yeah. Like how, I, I I think for me what I see is um, there are so okay so one thing that shows up for me is that there's something one of my friends Toby Alexander is phenomenal he teaches omnipresence and all knowingness mm-hmm. so all knowing is available at all times to everyone so anything right. anyone has ever known mm-hmm. is available to you and there's a lot of really cool stories about how we transmit knowing. But anything anyone has ever learned can be learned. Anything that, right, if anyone has ever learned something, Mm -hmm. then that key state is available in the greater whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So if anyone's ever learned Chinese, Chinese language instruction is available, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since the spirit of, let's just say, Paul Walker um, knew how to do cars and drive fast cars and be in cars and love cars and that knowledge about how to do all that is available in the universe, right? Mm-hmm. And so just because the person doesn't have a physical body anymore, it doesn't mean that knowledge will not be present. Mm-hmm. In terms of how, I don't know that it matters too. And I, I get that it matters if you don't get it, but mm-hmm. then I don't really think about that. I'm just like, very cool, how fun is that? Yeah. And the fact that um, often what will keep someone's spirit connected to the to the earthly energies mm-hmm. is some lack of resolution. So probably 80% of the people who come to me with questions lost someone quickly. Mm-hmm. 
mostly people who lead quickly have unresolved crap that they forgot to deal with or just didn't know like that was going to be their last day and then all of a sudden there's like stuff that the other that like someone yeah. else feels so deeply the question like so if someone's sitting around saying you know how could Paul leave me how could Paul leave me and all his friends are doing that mm-hmm. constantly that mm-hmm. crushes him and then the movie came yeah. out and three and now there's a song started. isn't there a I mean, yeah. not to go off on a tangent, but yeah. And, 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 way, my friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, now 600 million people listened to that song and That's pulled a lot his of energy. Yeah. yeah. 600 million, only on YouTube. So That's not the radio, and that's yeah. right. And it's yeah. one in like 50 countries on the radio. 600 yeah. million listens on YouTube alone. So let's just say there's like 17 billion listens of that song, right? I mean, just guessing, extrapolating yeah, from all a lot of energy. media of that. And all the people who bought it and listened to it constantly. So yeah. now that energy is saying to him, how could you leave us? And now mm-hmm. that the being that is his spirit is saying, okay, well, here's some answers. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a beautiful illustration too. And and what I'm what I'm perceiving in the question um, is that we sort of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but I would like to expound on it because I do think there is a it's a very common perception that um, how do I phrase this when when we leave our bodies, yes, we do become less definition. We we don't have a form or a structure. We do, however, have the points of view and. If we choose to retain those points of view, it depends on the ones that we choose to take with us that actually kind of determine if we are perceivable by different people as the person we were in a body or as, you know, that familiar energy. Like I know that with – I have a great, great aunt and uncle that that come in to, to – check on me and see me and visit me often and um and then there are a few other beings who i don't know that i could say i've known them in this lifetime as a specific person i do recognize them when they show up there is this this definition as far as uh the collection of the points of view and so i i do think it can be confusing to some people like well am kind of like what you went through well am i really talking to so and so am i really talking to so and so and I also do get, it's like at some point, if you can let your barriers down and just say, okay, whoever I'm talking to, like, go with your awareness and and ask, is this someone who is desiring to be a contribution to me? And if you get a lightness or if you get a kind of a yes energy, that's a good place to start, and perhaps then you ha- can ask some more questions. Um, and you I can do know that set boundaries. So when I worked, mm-hmm. for, uh, I worked for a family foundation, and the founder of it was David Packard, and he is a head, was the head of HP. And so I was in the I was in the business of giving out, helping give out his money. And so it was going from three billion to fourteen billion in assets at the foundation. And so I used to feel his spirit wandering around the halls in the mornings. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can't handle that. Mm-hmm. Leave. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I I I appreciate this is also in the late '90s, and I just wasn't ready for it. Mm-hmm. I go, I appreciate that you have information. I'm not prepared to be the messenger for you. Yeah. And he's like, hey. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, I really appreciate you. Get the fuck out of my Get, Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so you can't actually ask people to leave if their spirit is, if they're giving. I mean, it sounds really benevolent in retrospect, like what was my issue. But I just well, wasn't prepared. That's a great point. To, yeah. I yeah. just said, you, you know what? Have the final say. I yeah, and same thing with Michael Jackson. Like, I can't handle it. I can't write your story. Yeah. And about a year later, I saw a book came out by him, and it was very similar to what, not by him, but by someone else. It was very similar to what he was showing to me, so he went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great point, too. It's like, so, yeah, it is it's it is interesting because we do, you know, being in a, in a body, we are very accustomed to relating to everything from really more of that, orientation of the form and the structure. I mean, it, it's kind of a natural occurrence. And so, yeah, it is a little different. And um, it, it doesn't – oh, gosh, the energy is moving really fast. So I kind of lost whatever that was. So apparently we're absorbing that. 
<laughs> through <laughs> telepathically. It's downloading. <laughs> so if there's if there's more of your question, Carol, um, post that please, because I would love I I would love to to have some clarity around that. Um, more. Okay, and more questions would be fun too. We're gonna have one more break and. Um, then we have some really cool stuff also that Erica has been um, co-creating with the, the help of some of her entity friends and, and friends. And so we're going to talk about that in just another couple of minutes. You are listening to Living Well on A to Zen FM. I am Keisha Clark here with the lovely Erica Glessing today, and we will be back in just a moment. <laughs> have you begun to ask yourself what you truly desire to create in your life? What if you being willing to embody abundant living was the key to your wealth and to creating greater in your life? And what if that could also be the invitation for more people to be willing to embody abundant living? Would that be a contribution to you and your body and to other people and their bodies? And might that also create more in the future? Join Keisha Clark Empowerment Agent and the host of Living Well Radio Show to discover, uncover, and crack open the wealth of possibilities you are every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a Bars session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a boys class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? How much of your life are you truly living? Are you creating your life in celebration of your strengths and capabilities? What would your life be like if you were choosing the abundance of possibilities of you now? Connect with Keisha Clark, your Living Well Empowerment Agent, now for a different perspective on creating the life you truly desire to be living. Call in with your questions. In the U.S., 815-880-8255. In Canada, at 613-800-8736. In the U.K., at 33 one 0625 by Skype at a2zen.fm or by emailing Keisha at livingwellnow at gmail.com. Now back to our show. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around with us today. We are talking to Erica Glessing here on Living Well with Keisha Clark on a2zen.fm and I am Keisha by the way. And um and we're talking about the contribution entities desire to be and gift us. Um and wow, we have so many different ways. I think we've sort of like just sort of graced a number of ways that contribution can show up and of course if we're it, it also is a bit relative to if we're willing to receive that, the information or the presence or uh, the interaction. Um, some people may not refer to that as contribution. <laughs> so um, it is a relative term. And my awareness and my experience now in, in at this point in my life is that pretty much everything I am receiving and everything I am choosing to acknowledge, um, and even my knowing is that still a number of things that I haven't acknowledged as far as my, the work I do with entities um, is, is in some way, shape, or fashion bringing me greater awareness and in many cases is literally gifting me with just the most amazing generative energies. So um, mm. Yummy. It's, it's really I awesome. I want some more like, of that. <laughs> yes, I will definitely be having lots more of that. And thank you. Mm-hmm. And so I would like to, for anyone who um, would like to do this, if we just take a moment, and I, I perceive that, 
or the sense I'm getting is that, you know, acknowledgement is greatly appreciated. So um, whether you have a name to call the beings that you are sensing around you or in your universe or whether you just refer to them as amazing beings that come to play with you, um, just a moment of acknowledgement and, and oftentimes, sometimes just the thank you can be so amazingly transformative for both my life and for the beings that I'm communicating with and playing with. Um, and that's really sometimes all they require. And sometimes what they're asking is just, you know, would you facilitate me? And sometimes that acknowledgement is a facilitation. And then other times they are desiring to bring a message or they are desiring to change something for themselves. And, um, and so many of us have capacities and capabilities to perceive this and that, and to know this and to be an energy with beings who may not have bodies. Um, and so I just wonder what invitation can we be, can this conversation be, to at least beginning to ask questions for those who might still have some question marks, um, to begin yeah. to acknowledge, I, you know. I, <laughs> go for it. I, well, what showed up for me is that, like, how – how funny it is that I go out to these, um, I really love uh, R&B music, so I love mm-hmm. Minnie Rippertons or Vandross, I love um, Teddy Pendergrass, I love uh, all this music that just like stirs my soul, I love the poetry of Maya Angelou, I love mm-hmm. her poetry, I met her once, I love her, so I can ask questions of the spirits of these people, yeah. and they bring validation so I was I was one time I was like this is just whack why am I talking to all these dead people and my friends like don't call them dead people I'm like oh be be silly you know I'm going to call them what I call them so I was like why do I keep this information I'm like I should really not do this and then I started thinking about Minnie Ripperton and the song Loving You is Beautiful comes on the radio within minutes and so I'm like it, it, so when you're open to the entities as having gifts for you, it's not just about you know, your grandfather who died in a car accident and nobody knew why. Like, it's mm-hmm. not just about that. That's such a finite piece of data. And the Beautiful. stuff that we want to know is so finite and so, like, minutia yeah. compared yeah. to stuff that's available. And so yeah. maybe just... If, if I could say anything, it would be to open up your mind and heart to pieces of information you're curious about or you want to know about, and then and then just, like, put it out there, like, what information is available, and then just open up to what's possible, because I think the way, like, the whole medium business has gone has been, like, you know, I will contact someone, like you were saying earlier, who mm-hmm. has passed with a deep question I need to know about X, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's... Um, if it's more like uh, how, and I think that's where you're getting to with generative. So for me, it's like how can I be more of a service to consciousness on the planet, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. really the question. That like what so can yummy. I do to help <laughs> consciousness on the planet? Yeah. And then what would be the perfect way for that to show up for me? And then yeah. oh, well, you should teach this. Should teach that and all of a sudden like kabam I'm getting all this stuff I'm getting yeah, I love on. that <laughs> and, and it's juicy and it's yummy and it's open yeah and so it's that's I think when Keisha when you and I were talking about like what would be a good focus for the radio it's more like how can we expand our consciousness with yeah. the help of entities and certainly calling upon someone who was a major negative force in your life to resolve something horrible you know, that's okay, too. Like, that's okay. Like, if you need mm-hmm. to do that, do that. But, mm-hmm. no, there is so much more possible and available from the entities. And there's this movement right now for consciousness on the planet where there's a willingness now from not only entities, like you were talking about, like, um, you know, from people who are no longer living, but mm-hmm. also from, like, other planets, like, so there's, there's beings, energy yeah. from yeah. Earth. Someone said yesterday, like, I wasn't feeling that good, and she was like, well, how much of your energy is trying to heal something in the Earth? Like, how yeah. much of your energy, like, and it was just a very interesting question about integrating um, bigger power. If you're calling to be bigger, 
Yeah. What bigger power can you bring to that picture? And then what resources are you not tapping? Because you might be mm-hmm. too finite in your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Excellent point. Oh, and on that, you have a fantastic program that you have been in co-creation now with um, that entities have brought you awarenesses and, and informations. And we have about five minutes, so I would love for you to share with listeners how to get a hold of you and what this amazing venture is. <laughs> well, um, it's happypublishing at gmail dot com is my email, which is happypublishing at gmail dot com. But what I created, it's so much fun. It's twelve weeks of visibility. And I think, you know, Keisha, you, uh, you enjoyed some of the classes I've taught in the past on visibility. Yeah. And we're going to open with knowing your worth. And then we're going to shift into lowering your barriers to the judgment. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times people who are light bringers are fearful if they're themselves, they're going to be judged. And so we're going to work through some of that stuff and let go of some of that stuff. And then we're going to look at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, where are we not kicking you-know-what and how can we get bigger? (laughs) We're going to put our teams to work on this for us, with us, um, and then we're going to shift into like TV, radio, and then really accepting fans and followers because I've worked with some people on visibility and a lot of it comes from really connecting with those people who wish to connect with you. And, you know, I haven't always walked the talk, so Really, on um, any of my websites, it's almost impossible to get a hold of me. Mm. How fun cool. is that? Cool. <laughs> <sighs> There's so, so much yeah, so it's, in there. <laughs> I, so it's, it's, it's on visibility and media, which makes sense since I was a news supporter for mm-hmm. 20 years or something. And, and it's a lot of fun. And um, I think the class is really asking to be um, quite generative in it spirit and nature, and also to kind of like rocket ship someone out of the, into the stratosphere, so it wouldn't be for like the weak at heart. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be for someone who's really like saying, okay, I'm done being small. (laughs) If you're not ready to stop hiding, this would not be the class, the the course to do. (laughs) Uh, You want to take on your hiding and say... How could I do my messages? And it will include some um, public relations like uh, press releases. It's all at ericaglessing.com. I just put it on the home page of ericaglessing.com. So I took off my beautiful home page and I put this course up on there instead. So I'll move my beautiful home page back <laughs> at some point. But right now I put it on the home page and of um, ericaglessing.com. And Keisha, you know, I just want to say like you have – so much knowing oh, and it you. resonates with so much validation so I just want to share with you that all of your knowings all these things we perceive the messages that you get from your aunt your aunt great aunt, great aunt uh-huh. all of those things are just like dancing with joy that you're oh. acknowledging it and 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 just Oh, there's just even more information available to you, and it's just like so joyful to be like supporting you. So I thank you. That I am just I am so yummified right now. This is so awesome, <laughs> and this for mm-hmm. me, this is such an enormous contribution. Is just being able to have the conversation about the possibilities, you know, and and. And one thing I get, too, is that a lot of us go into there's a wrong way and a right way to communicate. And you know what? Just be willing to play. And what if you what if you just put some questions out there and, like Erica was saying, you know, see what song shows up on the radio and see what, um, yeah. what yeah. magazine jumps off of your, you know, coffee table <laughs> or, oh, you know. Oh, gosh, yeah. Does yes. your dog come in and bring a particular toy? You know, anything. And then really uh, for me, it's been the practice of acknowledging. And just like when it shows up, it's like, wow. And and what I love is that they are so – everyone is so desiring to be a contribution to us. We are so yeah. desiring to be a contribution to each other. So I think yeah. perhaps that could be a fun question to take us out is what now – what contribution to creating greater and co-creating greater with each other and with 
multiple beings, in bodies or not, uh, can we all be and choose and receive now. And Erica, thank you so much for being part of this with me. I'm looking forward to hearing fantastic things and having you back. And thank awesome. you, everyone, for making this conversation amazing. And let's keep it going. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for listening in today to Living Well with your host, Keisha Clark. You are invited to join us every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. In the meantime, what would it take for you to be choosing more of the abundance and prosperousness of